When I was a kid, my favorite movie was definitely Ghostbusters. Great sci-fi action, tremendous production design, and wiseacre characters. What's not to love? That's a big Twinkie. Hi, I'm movie man Eric Houston, and Ghostbusters was the very first movie I owned on videotape. My parents bought it for me on the night they went to see Ghostbusters 2, and I watched it over and over again. I owned the toys and the trading cards, and I watched the cartoon religiously, even if the Were Chicken episode freaked me out. <laughs> I was even a devoted fan of the other Ghostbusters cartoon, the one with the gorilla. I wouldn't be too surprised if you missed this one. It's become pretty obscure, but over the years, it's definitely one that stayed with me. These Ghostbusters origins date back to 1975, when a live action version aired on CBS. This show was produced by animation studio Filmation and starred F Troop alums Forrest Tucker and Larry Storch, who, as of this taping, is still kicking at age 97. Way to go, Larry. And Bob Burns rounded out the cast as Tracy the Gorilla. Tucker and Storch's casting was obvious. Filmation had a tradition of adapting old live action shows into an animated format with shows like Star Trek, Lassie's Rescue Rangers, and The Brady Kids. Filmation had tried to make an F Troop cartoon, but when that fell through, they must have decided to employ Tucker and Storch's talents elsewhere. Bob Burns, meanwhile, was an actor with his own gorilla suit that he had used to play a character he called Kogar in small movie and TV appearances. Filmation had actually hired a different actor with the gorilla suit, but when that actor demanded more money at the last minute, Filmation decided to try and find their own costume. When they couldn't find one good enough, they were lucky enough that a chance encounter brought Bob Burns into their office. The producers loved Burns' suit, which now featured a new mask from special effects master Rick Baker, and they were floored by Bob's comedic acting talent. As a side note, Bob Burns is also one of the original movie nerds, and is famous for his collection of movie memorabilia, which includes the last surviving 18-inch armature from the making of King Kong, and the original time machine from George Pal's movie classic. All 15 episodes of Ghostbusters were shot in just nine weeks, an incredibly short amount of time. Storch and Tucker needed little direction, having honed their act by working together for years. That fat man file? Well, not exactly. It's the Limburger cheese sandwich I lost last month. Producers were also helped by the limited sets and the extremely formulaic nature of the show. Each episode begins with the arrival of the ghostly menace of the week. These trips from the beyond are wearying. Next, the Ghostbusters head to a general store to get their new assignment via recorded message hidden in an everyday object. This is Zero, Ghostbusters. Your next assignment is to stop the ghost of the Phantom of Vaudeville and his partner before... Naturally, the message explodes after being played. The Ghostbusters then head to the only local castle for a series of chases. Well, maybe it's the wrong castle. It's the only castle. Finally, they'd shoot the ghost with the dematerializer, while Forrest Tucker says, zap. <laughs> it's a sort of oddly charming show. I mean, who doesn't want to see a gorilla drive a car? And was pretty popular in 1975. It was reportedly the second most popular of all the new Saturday morning shows that year beaten out only by the one-two punch of Shazam and Isis, also produced by Filmation. Ironically, that second place finish would prove to be their undoing, as Filmation decided to spend the Ghostbusters budget on improving Shazam and Isis, rather than on a second season of ghost chasing fun. Mighty Isis. The Ghostbusters quickly faded into history, seemingly forgotten by everyone. So much so, that when Columbia Pictures began working on their more famous Ghostbusters movie, they had supposedly never even heard of the earlier show. Of course, that didn't stop Filmation from stepping forward to protect their title, and Columbia had to pay a half million dollars to use the name. Filmation had Lou Scheimer smelled a hit and worked with Columbia on producing an animated adaptation of the movie. When that didn't pan out, he simply decided to revive his own characters for a new series of animated adventures. 
The new series saw Tracy the Gorilla team with the sons of Tucker and Storch's characters to battle the malevolent Prime Evil and his team of bumbling henchmen. The cartoon was silly and fun, with animation allowing for a wider range of stories and settings than the live-action series. Plus, it still had a gorilla driving a car. These new Ghostbusters were often aided by another character, Futura, a Ghostbuster from the future. As a kid, I was obsessed with Futura. Her stories were always like a combination of Ghostbusters and Back to the Future. And she looked cool as hell. The Crusader's master computer has been taken over by a ghost! One of our beloved family stories even revolves around my Futura action figure. See, I'd gone shopping with my dad, and while we were walking along the mall, I lost Futura's helmet. Dad managed to find it and gave it back to me. Of course, I promptly lost it again a couple of minutes later. Somehow, Dad found the helmet again, but this time decided he'd better hold on to it until we got home. To this day, we can't believe that he managed to find this little helmet, not once, but twice, or that he was foolish enough to give me something I'd just lost. My brother and I called this show the Let's Go Ghostbusters after its catchy theme song. And it debuted just five days before the quote-unquote official cartoon based on the movie, which ended up having to call itself the real Ghostbusters to differentiate itself from Filmation's Ghostbusters. And let's be real for a moment. Calling your show the real Ghostbusters is some pretty amazing shade. Of course, as a kid, I didn't care which ones were the real Ghostbusters. Two Ghostbusting cartoons were better than one, and I still have fond memories of both of them. Hi there. In today's story, Futura and her brother both had tough jobs to do, but because of their love for each other, they knew they could count on each other for help. There are always jobs or problems that are too tough to handle alone, and that's when it's great to have a brother or a sister or a friend to turn to. Likewise, whenever someone you love asks for help, give them a hand, because that's what love and families are all about.